Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at another flow use case and how to um, overcome kind of a flow limitation that we see by using Aura component. I'm not going to be using Lightning Web component because I haven't started learning that yet. Uh, but anyways, I will be sharing the Aura component code. So even if you are not a programmer, you'll be able to copy paste this code into your org and just use it right out of the box and you'll be able to configure your flow uh, accordingly. So the use case here is, uh, let's say I have a flow, it's a screen flow that we are using. Um, I have other videos if you wanna see how I build this flow, but let's say if your business don't want this next. So by default, if you have used screen flow before, you will see that you'll have previous, next, pass, those kind of buttons that is, you cannot change the wording on that button. So maybe your customer don't like next, they want to say it's complete or something like that. So for that, um, I built a custom component that you can embed in your screen element and overwrite basically this section. Okay, so I'm gonna be kind of uh, reverse engineering this. So I'll show you how, how I added the component, then we can look at the component itself. So let's look at the first screen here. So the first screen, what I did was, I kind of, so if you have, let me check this show footer. So this is out of the box. This is how you're gonna, you're gonna look like. So your screen element will have a footer and ideally this is checked because you want your users to click on it. So show footer is checked and the control navigation, this is something you can control. Maybe you don't want to allow pause in this, that's fine. Um, and maybe if it's the first screen, previous does not make any sense. So you remove that as well and next or finish. So this is how your standard footer looks like. But now let's say I want, I don't want to show finish here. Um, so all I need to do is go to my search components and look at, this is the component we will install or build in our R flow footer and just drag and drop that here. And after doing that, you will need to make sure that you hide this standard footer um, component because otherwise you will see two finish buttons. So in this case, in the component, after I drag and drop the component, what I'll do is I'll give it an API name and you can change it to something that you like. Maybe for finish, I wanna say, call it complete. And for next, I want to say proceed. And previous, I don't have a previous here and pause is not valid in this scenario. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And just to show you how it looks like, I'm just gonna keep this as well. So I'm gonna say show footer as well so I can show you side by side, hit done. And then I have another last screen where I also have a previous. So in this case, I have a previous as well as next or finish and I'm using the same flow component. So you only need to create the component once. And once you have created that, it will appear under your custom component. So you just drag and drop that flow footer and add the labels as you see fit. So based on your requirements, okay? So I'm just gonna hit done and save this. So just to show you in action how that's gonna look like, I'm gonna click on debug and adding record ID here, because that's what my screen flow is expecting. So now you see, um, we've got two, because I didn't hide the other one. This is the standard one called next, and this is proceed. So I just wanna show you how that will look. So I'm just gonna say, and I want it to go to that screen. So I'm just, just gonna say 100K because my flow is actually catching that error. Um, so hit proceed and it should go to that other screen, just like how it would for next. And now I have go back and complete instead of previous and finish. And see how you can also style it where you wanna show it. So in this case, I'm showing it all the way to the left and all the way to the right and previous and finish. So this one, obviously I'm gonna hide because I don't want two buttons on the screen, okay? So this is how it looks like in the background. So once you have the component built, all you need to do is drag and drop and change the labels. So now let's look at the component and how I build that. I actually use the Salesforce documentation um, to build that. So there's a Salesforce documentation if you are interested in learning more about this. They actually go in pretty detail. So all I did was copy paste this code and make some changes to make it make it dynamic. So in this code, they will only, they actually hard coded labels here. So I made it so that you can pass it from the flow. Otherwise it wouldn't make any sense for, for an admin to use it, right? So in order to create 
a lightning aura component what you will do is if you have never coded before and it's not scary it might look scary if you're if you're starting but um, you go to your setup go to developer console so it will bring up the screen for you and then what you need to do is go to file click new and here say click lightning or a lightning component because that's what we're building so from developer console you can only create lightning aura not the web component so i'm just and just give it a name give it a very reasonable name that you can use in my case i just says said uh, flow navigation or something like that you can call it and then hit submit once you hit submit let me actually just do that show you hit submit and it will bring you to this screen now from here you can toggle around where you want to go so we actually need three code here so we need code for the component component is the front facing uh, thing that you see it's the buttons controller will be where you will actually do certain things so uh, the actions that you're taking so for example um, when you hit next, it is actually taking you to the next screen. So those actions are controlling the controller and design will be where you actually tell the system that, hey, I want these values to be passed from the flow. So because when we're in the flow, we were able to say, if I didn't have design, I wouldn't have these values here to pass. So it'll be pretty static and it won't be fun. So uh, the design actually lets you do that, being able to pass those values from the UI and without having to ever go to the code itself. Okay, so I actually called my flow. So let me search for my flow that I built, flow footer. So I'm just gonna to search an existing flow, or sorry, to search an existing component, you can go file, open lightning resources. And here you'll see all your lightning components. I have very few, but some orcs might have multiple, so you can also filter it out. Just war gonna warn you, this filter does not always work well, so be careful. Um, so flow footer, I'm just going to click on that and open selected and I will uh, share this code with you but basically this is where we are passing that. So right now these are my buttons. Okay, So can pause, can next, can finish and these are the labels. I just copy pasted from that developer guide and v dot pause that this is what I added. And I can probably make another video on explaining this component, but for your knowledge, this is the UI piece of it. And then the controller where it's actually telling me, hey, if the available action is pause, you know, go to this uh, section, go to pause. And design is where I actually named it. Next var, previous var, finish var, and level for next. This is, actu this is actually what appears on your flow. Label for finish label for next that appears on your flow. So all you need to do is take this piece of code, paste it in your design, take that controller piece of code, paste it on your controller and same for component. So once you have done all that, you'll be able to save this. And if you for some reason are not able to see this component on your flow, make sure you have lightning for lightning available for flow screens. Uh, implemented here if this is not there then you won't be able to see this inside the flow to be able to drag and drop so make sure that's there if you're copy pasting it it will be there um, and that's that's pretty much all you need to do so just copy paste that code and drag and drop the component and pass these variables as you see fit real quick uh, revising make sure this is checked uh, sorry this is unchecked but control navigation is checked because if you don't have a control navigation, the flow uh, won't know what you want to pass. So the component won't know. So you need to have this checked and uncheck this if you don't want it to double show on the screen. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will also share the link to another unmanaged package from unofficialsalesforce.com for if you want to directly install it in your org and play around. Um, Here's my GitHub page uh, where I'll be sharing this uh, link to, to, so you can copy paste it. So I'll be giving you flow nav. You can go to flow nav and from here go to course app main default and aura flow navigation. 
and this is where you'll find all those components or all those individual elements of the component so you need the flow navigation dot cmp there is this uh, so copy paste this code and then come to flow navigation again go to design and copy paste the design element um, from here the wording might be a little bit different because this was created before I recorded this video and uh, you need the controller so go to the same thing flow navigation so flow navigation is a single folder and this, you'll have the sub sub documents and that and the controller is right here so you can copy paste this and save it in your org please let me know if you have any questions comments um, and if you like this video uh, hit that like button and or subscribe.